this is the talk on the dark playground of CICD, attack delivery by GitHub Actions, uh, given by speakers Yosuku Kobu and Yukuto Yamamoto. Um, we would like to thank our sponsors, especially our diamond sponsor Adobe and our gold sponsor Black Cat, Toyota, and Conductor One. It is with their support, along with other sponsors, donors, and volunteers that make this event possible. These talks are being streamed live, and as a courtesy to our speakers and audience, we would ask you to check to make sure your cell phones are set to silent. If you have any questions, use the audience uh, microphone so that YouTube could hear as well. Um, please welcome our speakers. Uh, hello, everyone. Today, we talk about attack techniques uh, related to GitHub Actions. I hope it will be useful and exciting for B-Sides Hacker community. Let me tell you about us. Uh, I'm Yusuke, and he's Kiyohito. Uh, we are from Japan and work for NTT Communications, a Japanese telecommunications company. Uh, we work as offensive security researcher, uh, sometimes works as an uh, internal red team. This is our presentation agenda. Uh, our talk goes like this. First, we talk about basics of GitHub Actions. GitHub Action is a CI/CD platform provided by GitHub that allows us to automate build, test, and deployment pipeline. This is a component of GitHub Actions. Uh, in our presentation, runner and action are important. So I, I will explain a little more detail. There are two types of runner, uh, GitHub hosted runner and self-hosted runner. In short, the difference is a resource owner. GitHub hosted runner with resource provided by GitHub. Uh, self-hosted runner run with resource provided by user. Runner supports some of operating system, uh, Mac OS, Linux, Windows, uh, but our research focused on Windows. Next, let's look at custom actions. Actions are individual tasks in the workflow. We can use a combination of actions to suit our purpose. And we can also create and publish on actions. Custom action has a concept of type and location. Uh, three types are available, but we have target JavaScript action and composite action that supports Windows. So much for the basics and deep dive into the main contents. At the beginning of the research, we analyze the behavior of JavaScript action. The figure is visualized uh, process behavior. As you can see, uh, runner.worker.exe executes node.exe and gives index.js as argument. This index.js is defines as entry point in the metadata file. And the script engine node.exe is included in the runner application package. Observing this behavior and specific specification, we came up with new attack techniques. Uh, what do you think of when you hear JavaScript? Uh, in general, it is a script language, the core technology of the World Wide Web. On the other hand, some may think of JScript. There is a basic compatibility, but JScript and JavaScript are different. Our research focused on both JScript and JavaScript. I mean, we considered two techniques for each. First, we introduced the JScript version. We call this technique malicious JScript custom action. This is a technique for executing JScript from JavaScript custom action via binary hijacking and masquerading. Prepare workflow and custom action for the attack as shown. The workflow has two steps. First step, replace the binary, and second step, uh, execute the custom action. This custom action is implemented in JScript, not JavaScript. 
The behavior of the endpoints when the workflow is executed is shown in the figure. Copy wscript.exe to node.exe and index.js is executed from node.exe. At this step, node.exe has been replaced by wscript.exe. We hereby add composite action. This one allows us to bundle multiple steps into, the, into one action. The figure on this slide shows how it changes with and without composite action. With composite action, the workflow is one step. I'll explain the reason for this later. Finally, the JavaScript custom action combined with the composite action looks like this. We call this technique as malicious JScript composite action. And here is the actual pop code we developed. The workflow calls composite action, and composite action copies wscript.exe in step one, and calls the custom action in step two. Index.js is written in JScript in which the attack is implemented. An attacker can arbitrarily attack by changing the JScript implementation. Uh, I have a quick demo of infecting Cobalt Psych C2 from this technique. Let me show you. The left side is attacker's view, and right side is victim view. A runner application is already running. And git push to GitHub to trigger the events. Um, then you can see that workflow. Yeah, workflow it starts. And some child's process starts from runner.worker.exe. And finally, sheet's connection is established. And at the end of the workflow, the process is terminated. Workflow.exe, this process is a sheet's process. Uh, it is started by early bad injection and PPI spoofing from runner application. So far, I have talked about JScript version, and next I will describe JavaScript version. We have discovered uh, attack techniques that exploit Node.js extension. Node.js has an extension called Shiprapra add-on. This one can be used for attack. We call this technique malicious JavaScript custom action. There is a package called memory.js which implemented functions like open process and inject DLL. Uh, we, use, we use this library in our POC. Uh, here is the actual POC code we developed. The work, workflow calls custom action. This custom action includes simple DLL and node modules for the attack. Um, Index.js is implemented in J JavaScript and is designed to perform uh, DLL injection uh, using memory.js library. An open process and inject DLL function are already implemented in memory.js, so our JavaScript, JavaScript code is very simple. We used memory.js in our research, but we can implement on C++ add-on for arbitrary attacks. Unfortunately, there will be no demonstration today. As my final part, I talk about some consideration. First, let's discuss the attack scenario. Malicious action disguised as legitimate action could be published in the marketplace by attacker. Then users may mistakenly use the malicious action, thinking it is a legitimate action. All users of GitHub actions are potential victims, so this is a big very threat. A composite action makes this threat as realistic. 
Without composite action, uh, step one is required. But who set up this? Even if users accidentally use a fake action, but they will not accidentally set step one. So as attacker side, it is very important to add composite action. It can also expand the attack possibilities in advanced technique. Run application tracks launch child process and kills all child process when the workflow is finished. This means that the process launches for the attack will also be killed. It is tracked by process environment variable called runner tracking ID. We can disable tracking by rewriting this variable like this. This makes the process persistent. Next, let's consider how to protect it. GitHub recognizes these attacks as threat and publishes best practice. Basically, it says that it is important to audit the code and the creators. Of course, it can be detected by security solutions like EDR or antivirus. Malicious JavaScript composite action is detected by EDR for defense evasion via masquerading. This is unchangeable part of these techniques, so it is a good detection point. Also, JS file is sometimes detected by antivirus. However, this is not effective because it can be easily bypassed. Like this slide, uh, with a few changes, uh, it's easy to bypass of detection, so antivirus is a not, not effective measure. Detecting JavaScript custom action is a bit more difficult because this technique does not require to replace a script engine, so there is one less detection point. We think it is important to detect the attack behavior being carried out, not this technique itself. And this technique may also be effective against AMSI. From a quick analysis, it appears that Node.exe does not support AMSI. So in my part, let me introduce GitHub Actions C2. GitHub Actions C2 is implemented by utilizing the GitHub Actions runner application as an agent. This is an abstract image of GitHub Actions C2. The runner application runs on target machines connecting to GitHub, especially attacker's own repository. This connection becomes C2. To operate this attack, attacker push a malicious configuration file outside GitHub. This C2 has two features or threat. The first is the source process is a legitimate application. So runner.worker.exe, like that. And second point is that the destination is a legitimate domain and IP. I will explain more precise. So how to establish C2? So as officially stated, runner application when launched performs a long polling, uh, long polling against GitHub to await jobs. So to manage runner as a C2 agent, assigning a unique label is needed. This allows attacker to send a command individually when establishing a C2 connection with multiple target. With that level, attacker end up sending the same command to all connecting runners. How to send the commands? So any shared commands can be executed via uh, GitHub Actions workflow. Workflow jobs are described in a configuration file on attacker's repository. So we can trigger the workflow by GitHub events like push. And in this case, we can, uh, we can use webhook event called the repository dispatch. We can call this event using a call uh, while passing instruction 
from outside of GitHub. Plus, using just introduce malicious custom actions, more advanced attack can be also be performed. I will show you short demo to make it easier to image. Victim runs the run applications, and then after that, the attacker send commands, calc.exe uh, and fullmi. Then you can see the calc.exe is launched. And we can see the fullmi result. So attackers, uh, attack scenario is almost the same as C2. Uh, firstly, attacker create a public repository for attacks. And then uh, send the runner's application to target using techniques as a, such as phishing. After that, target user unknowingly runs it as shown in the demo. about detections. So since source process and the destination domain is legitimate, C2 establishment is harder to detect. So it's a very ordinary way, but don't miss a lot for activities related to GitHub Action C2, just they, uh, just they seem legitimate. Last part is other threat related to GitHub Actions. I will briefly introduce three threats. First threat is free jacking. Free jacking is a process of using free cloud resources to perform crypt mining operations. Attacker execute mining script using GitHub resources and they get rewards. To utilize GitHub resources, the attacker send pull request triggering mining using others repository. To prevent this, GitHub change the specification and the approval has been required to run workflow from public folks since April 2021. So attacker have shifted their focus toward automatically creating GitHub account, executing GitHub actions, and exploiting GitHub resources. Secondly, malicious public for pull request. The idea is that if a self-hosted runner is being used with a public repository, GitHub actions may become a potential entry point for uh, external attacker to gain initial putfall. GitHub recommend using a self-hosted runner only for private repository. However, it's worth noting that there are numerous organizations still utilize self-hosted runner. Lastly, steering secret. GitHub provides a feature to create encrypted environment variables called a secret as an organization or repository level. Secret can be accessed by GitHub actions when they are set up for repository. This poses a potential risk of a secret being stolen if accessed by external attacker through GitHub actions. So, I ended up here conclusion, there are three points. By utilizing the feature offered by CICD, such as a command and a, a script execution, it's possible to launch attack within the legitimate CICD process. Malicious code may infiltrate the CICD pipeline without notice through publicly available malicious plugin. There's a risk of enabling C2 through the legitimate feature offered by CICD which are the user on the host for executing the task. This is our feature work. So thank you for uh, GitHub security team for cooperation. Also thank you B-Side Las Vegas for accepting our talk.
Um, if anybody has any questions, you guys have five more minutes to ask. Hi. Uh, so I work for a corporation that has a number of publicly available software development kits hosted on, on public GitHub. Uh, we use CICD uh, to run unit tests and show test coverage that uh, hopefully our customers can trust the efficacy of the SDKs deployed. Uh, and we've observed a couple of pu malicious public uh, PRs. Uh, you're saying that we're working on locking down those repos so that doesn't happen again. You're saying the current industry wisdom is to simply disable CICD for public repos. Is that the case? Or is there another, is there a way I can have my unit tests and not malware? Uh, so, 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 question? Uh, how do I configure CICD with GitHub Actions for a public repo and not be subject to malicious public PRs? Are there ex other access controls that we can implement? Sorry, it means how to uh, set set the malicious P uh, CICD pipeline. Yeah, so the, the, the GitHub uh, suggestion is to only use CICD on private repos, but uh -huh. yeah. our customers will only use our SDKs if they have unit tests run and we can show a certain amount of test coverage. Uh, so we, we need to use CICD on public repos in order to get that assurance and get that testing. Mm -hmm. there's, there's just no way of hardening a private runner against malicious public PRs. Is that? Right, but the uh, CICD is trigger prior to review and merge. Well, so the secret stealing that they were showing works on self-hosted or uh, public hosted runners, either way. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the insightful talk.